I would like to tell you about educational bridges. Meaning, you probably uh, stood here for a long time, studied it, well, and somebody over there uh, that you never met would benefit from meeting you on the other way. But you never do, because there's no way to meet. So the thing of doing an educational bridge would mean you have a chance to meet each other, learn from each other, and each one teach one. Right? I would like to use the example of mediality, which um, is a study we set up in Denmark 14 years ago, by now the largest IT study. But I have to motivate the whole thing. So, we have to go back uh, when I was a teenager, which is uh, a long time ago. Back to the 60s, and uh, you could imagine uh, the music playing, you heard it from your mother and father, what went on there, Beatles and stuff. So I would be busy with uh, my daddy's analog camera, black and white photos. I would be busy in a, a rock band, everybody played in a rock band, we went on stages 100 times. Not connected to the photo at all, and then uh, all of a sudden there was a weird thing emerging in the background, a so-called computer. No one really knew what that was all about, but it was there, and I was uh, looking at it. But I couldn't sort of embrace all of these uh, interests, my photos, my music, and this computer. I couldn't study it in one context, so I chose the computers. So during the 70s, 80s, while I was a professional engineer, software construction, and also a computer scientist writing uh, papers about computers, I still couldn't meet my interest in imaging and sound and music and photos. Hmm. Then, during the 90s, my teenagers came to me and said, we have uh, games on our rooms, we have keyboards on our rooms, we have all sorts of interaction going on, and we like computers, we like it all. That, why can't we study that? And so did my students. Can we do a combined study? No, you cannot. I couldn't tell them because the film schools could not do it, the engineering schools could not do it, the universities could not do it, nobody could do it. So motivation for me making mediality came to me over the decades, slowly, and I finally got desperate. I had to do an educational bridge. It was a lot of a challenge and uh, a lot of energy went into it. Uh, I happened to live in Copenhagen and nobody wanted to discuss it. We did what we did, it's okay. I went to Odense, my hometown. Interesting, but would there be any students in it? Okay, I left for the west coast. And in Esbjerg, a tiny eight-yard campus with a tiny place. Yeah, let's do it. So we opened it in um, August 2002, and in came the students. What is it then? Well, let me structure it for you over the next uh, five or six minutes. You have to imagine a cube of topics. And then there I put uh, what was then not discussed at all at uh, universities and studies. But of course now is a common uh, knowledge to deal with, such like uh, games was one corner of the cube, and animation was another corner, hypermedia, and uh, you all say, well, yeah, we have that all together. Then you did not. There was also, which is not a common, common sense of talking, even today, musical informatics, film informatics, interaction, performance. So this cube had eight topics, which young people talked about all the time, but couldn't go anywhere to study. And the idea was to have this in one study, which I baptized mediality, and then uh, walk the bridges in there at all times. Let us try to stand in one corner of this cube. 
I choose the corner of perception. So, in mediality, there is a topic called perception. And I'll tell you what that is, and shortly we will walk from perception to other domains, and you will see what projects could be done. Now, perception has uh, to do with uh, human perception, how we hear, how we see, how we touch. And then in turn, can we make uh, IT computers uh, do stuff like that? Yeah, well, come on, man. We have digital cameras. That's probably the eye. We have microphones. That's probably the ear. We have uh, tactile sensors. That's probably our fingers. Yeah. But take it to a slightly higher level. Let me suggest a uh, perception example, perception experiment for you. All of you go in a dark room. No light to be seen. Darkness everywhere, you can't see a thing. But someone, maybe the front row, each put on uh, light bulbs on their joints. And take a little walk while these light bulbs work. You see it. Yeah, well, you say, if I did it, well, that's an old man in 65, and uh, rah, 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 he's a bit tired, and so on. Then we bring a little girl up at eight years, and she take the walk with the light bulbs on the joints. You say, yeah, that's a little girl. We bring in a woman at 35, that's a woman at 35. You, you all get it immediately. Your brain analyzes and get it. But think of, if you took a computer and one of these cameras standing there, an USB uh, connection, whatever, and uh, ask how would you compute what is walking there? Is it most important of the knee motion? Is it the hip? Is it the combination? Is it how much they each move? Is it something what? How do you perceive a little girl at eight walking, an old man at 65, and so on? Well, we studied that and uh, tried to put it into computers. And uh, you may imagine a lot of products already, I guess. In this cube of mediality, I was promising a few examples from one corner of perception. Let's walk the bridge to music, musical informatics. Say, I took my Italian colleague, it actually happened, we did a European project on it, and he told me, Jens and Pisa, we have so many uh, things we like to play. I have uh, composed stuff for a lot of people, and uh, it's a classic tune, and it's a contemporary thing, electronic, but I can't find all the people to do it. They're occupied, they are busy. So we discussed having for instance, that camera, I tell the audience there's a camera standing there, we could have that camera connected to some virtual instruments. I could take my light platoon, this is a light platoon, you see, not a light sword, but a light platoon. Camera sees it. And I would conduct you skillful people playing your instruments, I would conduct the virtual orchestra in one. It would take some technology, and uh, I wouldn't know how the musician think about it, and the musician wouldn't know how the, I thought about it as a computer programmer. We met on the bridge, and we actually did this thing. What happened next was uh, a lot of weird things, and we had to meet again on the bridge, and each one teach one, because you might think that when the conductor makes the stroke, everyone attack the instrument. You might know they don't do that. If the conductor does that, nothing happens. Till uh, 472 milliseconds later, then poof, the entire band comes in. But the virtual band is already there. So, so we had to learn from each other what is actually going on here in uh, conducting <laughs> and get it into the virtual instruments. We had a lot to do on the meeting on the bridge. You can imagine a lot of things. I would suggest someone do an interactive radio. I have a radio back home. I have my CDs and vinyls and I have MPEG something. And in there are empty fields. Could it be I could do a thing with my radio so when I come tired home and listen to my favorite music, I say, take it slow. 
And when I'm excited about to celebrate something, take it up a bit, right? Nobody did that. You could have a swell company doing an interactive radio with a little conducting ion. Let's stand here in the corner of perception again and walk another bridge, maybe to some visuals, the, the, the film informatics. So imagine you're doing a movie and you shoot it, and, and that's common knowledge, but then you shoot with uh, 100 cameras. And by the time of playing by your telly on your screen back home, there's a device looking at your eyes, what is your interest? Maybe even a sensor on your heart? And I, I don't know. At least something that pays attention to your attention. And in turn, take the movie from the angle you are most interested in. That person, so he's, she, is it a child, is it? Whatever you're interested in, the dog. See it from that perspective. Can easily be done, but, but you have to meet on this bridge and, and discuss what meaning to put to it. Take a football game taken with 100 cameras and, and, and your favorite uh, player, why not uh, have him? It's usually guys that play football, but uh, in Denmark we also have women. Him playing in front of you at your screen and another could choose another one. Let's stand in perception again and um, Walk to the topic of uh, performance. We had a thing uh, over there called Senso Armor and as well teacher. And he was very good at handicapped children who had an accident by a car and couldn't do anything but move a finger. So he would put in this child in a sense, drama with sensors and uh, screens and, and music and loudspeakers. And, and sort of, uh, over the days, this child taught himself, met some uh, technology and possibilities on a bridge he never was in. And the technology itself was a bridge between uh, welfare and uh, sound and music. And he started smiling for the first time in 17 years, and her mother started crying, and it was so beautiful. So, so you see, there are so many bridges you can walk for sheer entertainment, for welfare, for training, for dissemination of information. I'll let you afterwards walk some bridges, and yeah, you probably would like to walk a bridge between game and sound. Whoever paid attention to the sound in a game is just some background noise. What about a game which is primarily or entirely driven by sound? Hmm? You could have a world product there. Nobody did such a, a weird thing, but it's obvious. Yeah. So, mediality was motivated during my... Uh, teenage time in the 60s, my professional time in the 70s, 80s, my students in the 90s, and then we set it up around the turn of the millennium. And um, here we are. The peculiar thing about it is we had to go out of Copenhagen to do it. Then we had to re-export it into Copenhagen because it was raw from Youngsters, can we do it over here? We started video lecturing and now there is an entire campus in Copenhagen. Some advice. If you want to do an educational bridge, you should not uh, stay and fight in the same place. Go somewhere else. A little agile place where they want to try out something new. A second advice. Get some new teachers. For the gaming course, I hired the guys who did Hitman. For the animation course, I hired a girl from Portugal with a PhD and a girl who went through Disney Studios. For the Sensorama, I hired a good man from Wales and so on. Get some new teachers who already like to walk on the bridge. And the final peculiarity, and maybe a hint, 
It's still peculiar that this mediality is sitting in one faculty, actually faculty of technology. When we talked about a bridge, it should lie across other faculties. So that may be the next step after mediality, and I'll leave you with uh, that comment. If you don't do it, I uh, might find somebody else to do it, but we need to build more educational bridges. We need to do it in larger scale. Mediality was one example, and uh, I hope you got some ideas in it. Thanks for your time. Thank mm -hmm. you.